Read by Lisa Herkham. If you are a wolf, you shouldn't go into the city. The dangers that await you there are more diverse than a woodcutter's axe. You cannot escape every kind of city danger, no matter how clever you think you are. Someone should explain that to wolves. If you are a naive young man who is not sure of how to interpret body language or meaningful looks or the licking of lips, then you shouldn't go on dates with strange women. The dangers are many and varied, and the outcome can be painful. Someone should explain that to young men. This here is a story, a story that is old and new, a story about cunning and naivety, bad luck and good luck, and death. Death is a good way to end a story. This story is about a cunning wolf and a naive young man. The wolf only looked like a wolf on the inside. On the outside, she looked like a perfectly nice young woman. She wasn't nice. She wasn't nice at all. But she hid her wolfiness well. The young man was nice. He was also inexperienced and open to manipulation. The young man was jogging one morning in one of the city's parks. This was his regular habit, and he always kept to the same route. This was good luck for the wolf, as she had been able to watch him for some days unobserved. It was bad luck for the young man that she decided she'd had enough of watching. She was ready and delighted by the sight of him coming near and nearer, pounding away in his red top, hood bouncing on the back of his neck. The wolf licked her lips and stretched her shapely legs. A very good luck day, she thought. The young man paused for a drink and to check his time. The wolf stepped out from the trees and began a rather unconvincing bout of stretches and warm-ups, as if she too were a jogger. The man couldn't help but notice the long-legged beauty and was delighted when she struck up a friendly conversation. A very good luck day, he thought. She admired his running top. Red was her favourite colour, she said. He didn't know, of course, that he was talking to a wolf, and he was friendly and unguarded. He told her all about himself, his future plans and where he was heading. Silly, silly man. They made an arrangement to meet later that evening at a bar of the wolf's choosing. The wolf got there first and sat, all dressed up and starving at a table near the window. All the better to watch him approaching. She was soon joined by the young man. He had brought her some home-baked vegan banana bread, all tied up in a red napkin. Honestly, he didn't have a clue. The conversation was a little stilted. The wolf was well-travelled, spoke five languages fluently, and was well-versed in economic, political, and art history, with a keen and educated interest in maths, philosophy, theology, and modern English literature. The young man was not. Their conversation went like this. Young man, what lovely earrings you have! They suit your ears! Wolf, earrings do make ears look better, I think. All best ears have them. Young man, what lovely eyes you have. Are they naturally that colour? Wolf, no, they're coloured contact lenses. All vanity, no prescription. Young man, what lovely teeth you have. So white and pearly. To this, the wolf made no response at all. Just smiled broadly, showing her teeth to the very best advantage. You get the idea, I'm sure. At last, the wine was gone, and the wolf and the young man got up and left the bar. It was very late, and not so many people were about now as there had been earlier in the evening. The man was vulnerable, although he didn't know it, and the wolf was hungry. She was growing impatient, all that talk of ears and eyes and teeth. She was keen to get on with it. 
They walked along the pavement and he became aware that she was not always walking beside him. Sometimes she was a little ahead, sometimes dropped back. Occasionally she circled him. As they got to the bus stop, the street light flickered. And in that moment, he caught sight of her eyes, no longer green now, but yellow. The street light died. The young man became disorientated. He became disturbed by the wolf's movements around him. He realised he wanted to run. The sound of the bus coming towards them was like a buzzing in his ears. The wolf pounced. The man fell back. The wolf lunged. The man dodged. The wolf sprang and the bus came. The wolf went under the bus and didn't come out again. That was the end of the wolf. A bad luck day for her, after all.